Confetti Club, it is Pixie, as well as... Steve. Whoa. That sweet cinnamon rosebud energy is in the air, is it not? Um, I do not smell that. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is it's Valentine's Day, almost. Oh, yeah. Valentine's week. 12 days of Valen Day. And therefore, we are here again to do our second annual Stephen Pixie Valentine's Day Q and A. I hope it's a third annual. <laughs> Fuck me too, literally. <laughs> and if we, if we were to break up, I just have to like come back for the end. <laughs> we asked y'all to give us some questions on the Twitter, and we are just gonna freaking see them Twitter sparks fly. Lemonade Clown asks. <laughs> Lemonade Clown asks. <laughs> <laughs> Lemonade Clown asks, what is something mundane that the other does that you love the most? Also, please smooch the cats for me. What is something mundane? I don't know. <laughs> she makes coffee in the morning. I was literally gonna say I like when you make the coffee. <laughs> but like, you don't even, not even your coffee is mundane because I'll open up the thing and everything's like pink. Um, There's nothing mundane about anything that you do. Like, I don't know, going to the bathroom's a mundane thing, <laughs> but like, I don't like, oh wow, she's doing that, like, she's doing something that other humans do. <laughs> oh my god, she's so down to earth using the so bathroom. <laughs> I really like that you're creative. You have a lot of creative hobbies and pastimes that you like, really put a lot of your brain into. <laughs> and I think that's cool. Thank you. I just try to imagine me putting a lot of my brain into something. <laughs> <laughs> Mahoshojo Life asks, what was your most memorable and fun date? I answered the last one, didn't I? We both answered them. Well, do you want to lead on <laughs> You were the one who made- Okay, but do you want to lead on it? Or do you want me to lead on it? I don't have an answer. You don't have an answer to it? I have an answer to it. I'm very upset That's, that you don't I'm have an sorry, that was it. sassy that I said I don't have an answer. I, I just can't think it. Well, because I, my most memorable date is when we had donuts when we first moved here on the beautiful, like, beachy side and looked at the friggin' sunset and we had, like, beautiful Tim Hortons picnic moment. But I think I might have said that last year. Yeah, no, that was a great date. I was thinking of the one where we went to the beach together. Oh, yeah. On PEI. Yeah. And you had that wonderful, like, red... The stripey thing? And we, yes. And we had, like, strawberries and blueberries and listened to Metric and it was really lovely. That it was, was lovely. Nice. Benny Burb asks, What's been the biggest challenge having lived together for this long and don't say nothing? Chick -chick. Mm -hmm. Steve has a little bit of an issue with sleep. You just kind of don't abide by the laws of time, nor do you acknowledge the sun or moon, or it's, you know, any rotation happening whatsoever. Steve just totally works by his own clock. And again, when you're trying to like have a business partner and like do this together, that can sometimes, maybe that's also difficult about working together is that like, I get home from school cause I'm bound to that schedule. And sometimes our, yeah, it's like you work the night shift. The graveyard shift. Your body makes you work the graveyard shift of life. Yeah. I was gonna say, my answer to that would just be like, <laughs> dishes sometimes. We also have dish dish issues. I found out that I'll that's- I fully admit we have, we have dish beef. Like that's so common though. Oh, dish beef. I feel like everyone has dish beef. In it's... my case, dish groundless, <laughs> no, dish, dish beefless, beefless ground. ground. Draculolita asks, uh, how does your BPD affect your relationship? How does he help you cope? Love you both, by the way. Happy Valentine's Day. How does my BPD affect my relationship? I feel like my BPD, not, I don't want to say only affects my relationship, but the main thing that my personal borderline affects is my one relationship with my partner. So that's like almost nice because it's not like in every situation everywhere I'm really struggling, but it also makes it very difficult. It makes me very, very lucky to have someone who was open to learn about the disorder. Cause like interpersonal relationships, I just really struggle with like understanding 
social norms and communicating and things that feel wrong to me might not necessarily be like wrong to be vague as hell about it but i think we've developed a really unique and really effective way of communicating and sparing each other's energy and feelings because yeah when you're a living together dating and working together one of us is neurotypical and one of us has borderline personality disorder it's like how do we do that you ready for the most neurotypical answer ever yes I kind of just don't let it bother me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I, I kind of like, um... Don't, even, let, don't let what bother you. Well, like, even, well, let's say you have a panic attack. Like a really massive panic attack. I don't think about that for like weeks. Like yeah. it happens and I help you deal with it at the time. Yeah. And it doesn't leave me going, Oh, that was exhausting. Oh, how am I gonna do this? By the time we've gotten through it, I just kind of learn from the experience and maybe try to uh, help you better the next time. You do. Like, I, I look at ways that I can improve. So it's not like I'm not retaining anything from it. Yeah. But, um, no, it's just, I, I just, it's just so simple. I just don't let it get to me. It's just a part of life. Like, and it, it's, that's probably one of the most important things is you saying, like, you know, because for some people having a really, really severe panic attack or like the way most of my BPD manifests is through self, not just self-harm, but every various form of way I can put myself in danger. I don't really lash out. I've never like, I've never like hit you. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not no. like that is not what no. my BPD is at all. Um, it's just, bleh. <laughs> For some people having a really big panic attack like that would be so out of character that it would leave maybe you and your family and your partner like kind of spinning and and shook from that for a while but we and I'm so 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 lucky and grateful to be with Steve. Steve is so so amazing with my mental health and you've really just like accepted all of the videos and articles and everything that I've shown you to help you help me and to help us help each other it's awesome steve rocks um i think i'm getting better all the time you help me better every day you try and yeah just whenever you live with like a chronic constant condition that causes you to have regular panic attacks and episodes and to regularly be like just debilitated by your brain physically um, you do need people around you that can kind of help you get through that, take each one as it comes, and, and not make you feel guilty after. Because, yeah, they do happen. And that's just what my brain does right now. High five. Uh -huh. Clockwork Queer asks, what do you two think is the key to a happy, healthy relationship? You two are adorable BT dubs. Live, laugh, love. <laughs> Strong, kind, beautiful. We should get like a live, laugh, love thing made. <laughs> no. But in, in the form of strong, kind, beautiful. The key to a healthy relationship is communication. I was gonna say that too. That's communication. Communication. <gasps> Not just verbal communication, but also telepathic communication. Yeah, we are both Pisces, so we are psychically linked as well. These are the streams of fish. Blub blub. <laughs> okay. If I can't, you know, respond to you at school, because this happened just the other week, you were like, I thought you left me on red. So I sent another question mark, and I was like, I thought you sending the question mark was you rushing me. <laughs> and we sorted it out. I was just like, no, no, no. When I'm in class, like, I really don't check my phone. Mm. And you were like, oh, okay. And since we just understand. Communication. Man, texting's hard. Yeah, I literally hate instant messaging and avoid it at all costs. If you don't- Don't message me. Just you, email me. If you want to maintain a good dialogue with your partner, 
try not to read too much into their texts mm. because everyone kind of like texts differently and i find that people really try to read emotion from a text yeah be, be careful with texting it's this oof. totally 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 big and gray body language too has been a, a big thing with me because sometimes <laughs> with my bpd my literal face will be like <laughs> but I'm happy inside, but maybe I just spent the whole day at school like being like ba 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 social interaction and I just I'm happy, but I have an energy limit and when I'm like oh. and then you come home and, and I I'm say like, like a wicked zinger like I'm talking a wicked zinger <laughs> and, I'm and then like, she just goes and I'm me like <laughs> I did something wrong. No, it's just my energy when it's mm -hmm. out, I just cannot mask anymore. I can't put it on. And so just communicating that and being like, no, 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 ignore my face. I literally will just be like, ignore my face. Are you guys good at compromising for things? My ex always had to th have things his way. You guys are so cute together. <laughs> Your ex sounds kind of like, not chill. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm glad he's an ex. Um, um I, I do, think we're good. Well, I do most of the compromising, Jillian's and my compromise first. is that I don't really, I don't really care about like. Steve doesn't care. A lot of stuff, like I don't care about my presence in the house. It makes me kind of sad. Well, like it's be well the reason is because I am someone, I think very far ahead. I know that there is kind of like a like. A, a ceiling on how long we would be here. So for me, it gives me time to think about like if we were to go to another place, you know. I just said I kind of like came into this one, so I don't want to change anything when it comes to a place that I came into. I know that I'm happy with you. I'm just smiling because I <laughs> so extremely permanently. Well, I mean, we're gonna paint it all back white because that's just in the contract or whatever, in the lease. But like, you're like, it might be temporary, so I don't want to alter it too much. And I'm like, no, Steve, you should like arrange your, your, your Star Wars memorabilia. I would not dare desecrate this home with Star Wars It's not, it's not desecration. I want you to feel comfortable. I feel I've been like poking him literally the whole time he's lived here. Cause people think that I'm like literally taking a rainbow and like, <laughs> like shoving it down your throat. <laughs> it's just like the opposite situation. Like I don't want anyone to feel choked by the rainbow. I don't feel choked by it though. I don't mind. I don't mind it at all. That's good. I don't know why. I don't know why anyone gets this idea that I'm trapped in a rainbow prison. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly comfortable with it. Like I, I'm patient. You know, if I ever want to do something, I'll, I'll ask. I'll do it. You know. Mm. But I'm not in any rush. I'm just vibing. You're not an interior design fiend. No, I'm not. It's not your number it's one thing. It's not my thing. It's not my thing. It's majorly my thing. And you know what? We'll see what happens in the future. Do you know your love language? Klingon. <laughs> oh my god, you nerd! Do you know what they are? What, love languages? Yeah. No. Are there six? <gasps> Oh my god, we should do the f test. I speak English. I speak. Oh my god. Okay, Steve doesn't know his love language, but mine mine is like physical touch. Like hand hold, touch arm. It's like how you how you show and accept love and feeling. Oh. I feel like Steve is probably like quality time. <laughs> I guess. Steve's quality time. I'm physical touch. Moving on. <laughs> What fictional couple do you two most identify with? It's Asks. Kyle. Oh, that's Sophie! That's... Hi. Hey, Sophie. And Kyle. And Kyle. I, we just assume that Kyle also asked that question. Kyle is my longtime friend. We used to play uh, games together and sometimes still do, but we met on Roblox. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, let's say. I'm gonna say. Sakura and Tamoyo. Okay. Which one am I? You're Tamoyo. Because she makes movies? Yeah, and she's always cheering her on. But I don't design sweet. clothes. That's okay. You're. She also does film. But you do fashion. Would it be fair to I'm say that- I'm a magical that, girl! Would it, be not, would it not be fair to say we're both Tamoyo? 
<laughs> Our favorite fictional couple is Tomoyo and Tomoyo. Like if you grab both her and myself from the legs and smash them together. Oh, no. <laughs> we would merge into Tomoyo. No. Um, I was gonna say, um, I'm Steve Rogers, Captain America, and you're you're Peggy Carter. Because sometimes you'll wait forever for me to come and join you. <laughs> yeah. Your 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 unwillingness to abide by time also includes being late to everything ever. And my answer is Tomoyo and Tomoyo. Could be like Vision and Wanda, because you're a magic lady, and I'm a robot who doesn't understand anything and is trying to figure out feelings. Dana Ray writes, writes, what are some good and bad habits you've picked up from each other? Oh, Am good and perfect? bad habits that you've picked up from each other. <laughs> good habits? Oh wait, what's my bad habit that I've picked up from you? Chugging uh, <laughs> almond milk out of the carton, your turn. Uh, no, I just, I, I love just like, it's a rebellion thing for me because I know that my mom would probably like slap that carton out of my hand if she saw me doing, doing that. Like, I just love drinking almond milk, especially chocolate almond milk, straight from the carton. What's a bad habit that I've picked up from you? Um, you would know better than I do because you, like, watch me like a hawk. <laughs> We're, I'm just gonna have, I really, I'm having a hard time thinking about that one, sorry. If, if it comes back to me later, I'll just blurt it out. There we go. Haunted Pandas asks, <laughs> what are some cute nicknames you have for each other? Uh, babe. Bab. I call you honey a lot. You call me honey. But I do it in like an ironic way sometimes, where I'm like, honey, I'm home. Yeah, you also do it in regular ways. I feel like I call you like Speeben a lot. Like S B E E B E N, or like S B E E B P E N. Jilly Bean. Speeben. I say Jilly Bean, but I picked that up from your mom, so maybe that's a little weird. No, that's just, you know. That's just- Term of endearment. <laughs> just trying to feel motherly for you. Thanks, babe. No problem, homie. <gasps> Dream vacation slash destination to travel to together. I think we should count down and answer this one at the same time. I'll count down from three. Okay, but we're gonna say different things. But if we do, we can just go back and say the same thing. <laughs> okay, well why? Three, three two, two, one. one. Japan. I was- You didn't say it. I panicked. <laughs> was it Japan? I was- okay, well- Don't lie. My answer is not a word. Vacation destination? To travel to together. I... It's not a word? Okay, Please I'm, I'm really me. getting attacked right now. <laughs> my dream vacation slash thing to do with you one day, because we've never traveled together other than like just road trippies to mm -hmm. other provinces. I would love to fly somewhere with you to see either MCR or Panic. That is like top of my list. A couple months ago, you could have said MCR and I would have laughed at you. Uh, buh, buh, uh, buh, buh. I know, but that I always in my brain, I'm like one day I want to take you to see Panic at the Disco because you've never seen them. And I've seen my favorite band like an ungodly number of times. Them. <laughs> Him. Him. <laughs> no, and okay. And Japan, but I've been to Japan before and I didn't know if that was going to be your number one. Well, it's like, I, I want to go there because I want to see how you react to it. Instead of watching you vlog Just about watch it. my vlogs, baby. Pumpkin Bibby with an X in baby asks, does being a public figure ever put a strain on your relationship? No. No! But, <laughs> but it has had moments. Oh yeah. It has had moments. Spooky moments. Yeah, there have been spooky moments. I don't think I've told you this story. Someone recognized me at a grocery store and it was highly unnerving because I was very disheveled. <laughs> I, I, I don't like, like if I'm gonna go get groceries, I don't exactly put a lot of thought into my outfit. No. And like when someone recognizes me in my least appealing form, I'm just kind of like- It's like I'm gonna scuttle away. I don't wanna like scrape myself off the floor and just like roll Cease away. Cease to exist. Like a tumbleweed. Oh no. Um, they weren't like mean or anything. Uh, and I don't mind, like if someone, I just like- Yeah, you have The been, thing that's bizarre is You like, have been recognized as Pixie Lox's boyfriend. It's not like I do anything. Like it's not like I'm like- You edit, people love you. Yeah, but it Pe just- People love Steve. But like, it's not like I was you. 
No, but people love to stalk. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad, I'm, we're really lucky that, you know, no, it's like, people don't like try to meddle. We're not on tabloids. We're like, you know, people aren't trying to like, we've definitely had people try to, I mean, in our personal life. But yeah. being a public figure has, no one's ever been like, hey, no. Pixie Locks, you should dump that weenie. How does Steve feel about Queen Miku? What? Ask me again? Explain it and then ask me. <laughs> no, it's just another No, 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 explain it. Someone's asking your thoughts on Hatsune Miku. <laughs> like, just in general? Just Qu Queen Miku. Do you stand? He knows one song. That's a song? Oh, is that actually- I always thought that that was just like a weird thing that someone made. <laughs> uh, okay, I will say it like this. I'd, I'd rather watch a Vocaloid performance than a resurrected Tupac. Uncanny Valley wise, resurrected dead performers really creeps me out. Vocaloid. <laughs> It's just anime on stage. <laughs> Thank you! IRL Hawa asks, what do you two do for fun on your days off? We love to watch content. We love to consume content and sit comfortably on the couch. You, me, on the couch with yeah. a candle going. Yes. And two cats. Yes. Snacks, mm -hmm. possible coffee. Uh, yeah. And Precure. Currently, Heart Catch, Precure, and Clone Wars. Star Wars the Clone Wars. Yes. We always have two, like, things of media going at the same time. Usually there's, like, one that's my pick and one that's your pick. Mm -hmm. That's a good compromise. And we've kind of had that system in place, like, our whole relationship. It was the first thing that we came up with. Yeah, because yeah. we got together, and we've definitely said this before. You were like, I'm showing you every Marvel movie in, like, the MCU. And I was like, yeah. okay, well, I'm at least showing you, you know, Precure hour-wise is way, like, I can't show you every Precure. Mm -hmm. So I showed him Go Princess Precure. Um, and then after that, we just kept having to find, like, things to watch. So right now I'm showing him Heart Catch. We're about halfway through and he's showing me Clone Wars. Sometimes we find something that's really good and we just, like, binge it, like, uh, when we found another. Another. I really enjoyed that and I hate spookiness and gore and anything spooky scary, but I really, really enjoyed the anime called Another. When I, it when the story is good enough that the spook is worth it. Yeah. That was so cute. We were on, like, the second last and last episode and Steve's behind me with his phone like this and I'm like, are you watching it? like two minutes ahead and he's like yep and he's like okay look down steve is transcribing mm -hmm. all of like the spooky things he's like okay so uh they go through and uh they got a hit by the chandelier and i'm like all four of them he's like yes all four they continue we'll get smashed by a pillar i'm like ew and i hear it go like ah! that like get you a partner who will literally sit there and warn you of every tiny spook so you can enjoy the content that was really sweet. At Elonid asks, um, what is your favorite SpongeBob song? So are we counting the musical, please? Can we count the musical, please? Yeah, because the musical is the last thing that Steven Hillenburg gave his dying approval on, so. <laughs> We're like so far into the SpongeBob fandom. My favorite SpongeBob song, if we include the musical, is I'm Not a Loser. How about if you include the musical and the show? What's your favorite from the show? Probably Campfire Song. It it's just comes, basic. it comes in handy. <laughs> it's really useful. Have you ever sung it at a campfire? It really is magical. The obvious best SpongeBob songs. Oh. Uh, from a SpongeBob like connoisseur. Sweet Victory? Uh, no, actually. Sweet, I don't think Sweet Victory is the best one. Um, I, it's definitely in the top five, but like the best, the best SpongeBob songs. Best day ever, all right? It's gonna be controversial. People are gonna dispute this. Uh, best day ever. This grill is not a home. Oh! It is the ballad between oh. the ballad between Mr. Krabs and SpongeBob. It's just a grill. It's just a grill. Yeah, I know you're gonna forget and, that one. And and the number one Chris in Carpenter. my no, because that's just a jingle. It doesn't that's not a full thing. Uh, the best song from SpongeBob is ripped pants all just because i ripped my pants you know really? yes 
That one was great. That was such a great arrangement. And like his ass cheeks were. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, not in this way. I have a weird memory of this. It's not as it's not as butt cheeks. It was just a couple of buns. It was a couple of sandy buns. Because, but the reason I said the, the reason I said wait, I need to. The just bunch bobs. The reason I said butt cheeks is because the lyrics of the song you said ass is, is 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 uh, the reason I said ass cheeks is because the lyrics of the song was sand in your buns. Which is obviously referencing cheeks, <laughs> but yes. like they're using literal buns with sand in them. Genius. It's a really good song. <laughs> but those are my favorites at least. Oh my god. Lunar moon butt ass. <laughs> in your last V-Day video, you said that you guys have lost your edge. My question is, have you got it back? Also love you too so much. Do um. Do I look like I've got my edge back? I believe, I believe we said that in reference to the fact that we don't like go out on the town and we don't like club or party or drink or anything. And honestly, no, we're literally like so much further into our own house than we ever have been. It's also winter. Yeah. But even during the summer, I have no desire to consume alcohol whatsoever unless it's like a glass of pink champagne for an occasion. Like, I mean, I may I miss dancing, but like, I can just dance with you. Just twerk in your <laughs> bathtub. That's how I get out. Literally my desire to like boogie, like there's these weekly dance classes that my friend goes to all the time and I love joining her sometimes. So like, if I ever feel the need to incessantly twerk, I just do that. I think, yes, I let's think we've rewrite just, like, that. I, I, think, I think we have like, like one edge has become dull, but it's like a double-edged sword, and the other one is just getting sharper. And that one is the edge that's made of um, business and love. And uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, introversion. introversion. Yeah, you can slap a feature confetti club thing over my face. Uh, I probably got bags under my eyes anyway. Oh, so. speedin. Oh, let's just hide those with a nice, awesome illustration. Illustration. Of me. Something. Yeah. Yeah, I'd rather look at you than myself. You know what I love most about your fan art? What? Like, I get to have a 3D girlfriend and a 2D girlfriend. <laughs> this, this video's, video's featured confetti, confetti club, club member is... is... Ever Illustration on Instagram, who did this lovely illustration of me in my very a la at-home grunge comfortable look from my last vlog. Thank you so much. Oh my god, I love the way you did the friggin' writing. Ah, to have the calligraphy abilities of this. Look how pretty that is. Thank you very much for your support. You realize you're not gonna see my reaction to the calligraphy? Oh yeah, I guess I'm showing it to, <laughs> it, it to itself. I love you guys so, so much, and I'll see you in the next video, which is not this one, because this one is over. Bye!